was that for me? <laughs> Probably not. Whatever. Hey, good morning. Doing things a little bit different this morning. Uh, how many of you are very comfortable where you're sitting? Well, if you're not, that's good, because for those that are willing, we are going to get up and go into the fellowship room. I had seriously thought about going outside and walking around the church. Well, let's vote on that. <laughs> how, how, how many want to get up and go outside and walk around the church? Oh, what a... Hey, there you go. And I think we've got the majority, don't we? Well, we're going to be going in the back. Uh, I almost stopped on County E coming over this morning. You know why? Because the two donkeys that I told you about on Wednesday night were outside. They were standing near the fence. And as I went by, they said, take us with you. Take us with you. But I was already by that. So with that in mind, uh, if you would, if you're interested, part of our uh, process on Palm Sunday has been to somewhat process, and I'm going to put it this way. If you've got children with you and with palm branches, come on to the back. If you're feeling older and kind of want to just sit, whatever, whatever, you can go ahead and do that, be a stick in the mud, or whatever. And talk about sticks for years along with you, whatever. So with that in mind, that's where we're going to go first, into the back. So I'm serious. You, can get, you don't have to. You, know, you can stay here. But you also need your bulletins. You need your bulletins with you. <laughs> By the way, this is not an invitation to leave at this time. I, I thank you for staying and not leaving, you know, in terms of that. But let us begin with the Palm Litany as printed, and that's why I ask you to take your bulletins with you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life everlasting through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Gospel from the 21st chapter of Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them 
And he sat on them. And a very loud, large crowd spread their cloaks on the road. And others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day of David and King of Kings, by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path, we ask that you bless these branches. Let's take our branches and let's wave them. And those who bear them, and grant that they may ever last hail him as our Lord and King, and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. And we sing the acclamation hymn. You may start in, and then the words will be on the screen in front of you. Kathy, give us an introduction, please. Turning to the bulletin, or if it's on the screen, let us pray together. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And
And at this time, Carrie, Sunday school. Let me sing. Yeah, let's do it. There they come. Come on down, Sunday school. Bring your branches. Go get your branches. Come on. Go get your branches. Get another one? After. And later on. Hey, but before you go anywhere, I'm going to have a children's message. So let's have the younger ones come on and have a seat. And the older ones, well, sit down wherever you want. That's okay. Good job. Good job. Anybody want to guess as to what's in there? Yes. A palm branch. A palm branch. Now, how did you guess that? Oh, it's, it's sticking out here. Oh. oh, foolish me, I thought you'd miss that, whatever. First of all, you were singing Ho Ho Hosanna. Do you know what that means? Save us. Let's hear you say, save us. 
Hosanna. And this is what the people were saying when Jesus came into Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday, Sunday of the Passion. And the palm branches have always been part of Palm Sunday for us because they remind us of their green color, first of all. Is that the kind of like you have? Yeah, what do you think? Who, who's is bigger, yours or mine? Mine. Oh, yours. No, yours is I take the question back. I should have known better. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's a special week. You know, we often think of the time before Christmas as a special time. But also the time before Easter is a very special time. Because we remember, pay attention, we remember how Jesus went into Jerusalem and he was welcomed. But later in the week, the people didn't care for Jesus anymore and they did something terrible to him. I just have to tell you, you know, that's when they took Jesus and they put him on a cross, like the cross back there, in terms of that. Now that would be sad news for us, but the fact is it was the beginning of good news for us because a few days later, Jesus was raised from the tomb. And that's why today we start with a parade. We start with his time going into Jerusalem. We remember the cross, but we also remember the empty tomb. And one of the things I want you to remember is that when you go back to your seat, I want you to stop by over here, first of all. And the reason I want you to stop by is because there is what we would often have in the Christmas scene, the manger scene, because we have a manger there. And we are told in scripture that when Mary first gave Jesus birth, she took him and put him in a manger. And that was the start of the wonderful story that we have this week. Where after Jesus grew up, he went into Jerusalem and everybody waved their branches. Everybody waved their branches. Wake up out there. All right. But then the sad thing happened. Jesus was put on the cross. And at first we thought that was sad. But really that was the beginning of the good news when Jesus came out of the tomb he had been buried in, and God gave him new life, just as God promises you and me new life. So, let's see you wave your branches again. Good learners back here, whatever, good deal. Okay, so with that in mind, let's, let's pray. I wanna thank you for singing before and for singing later, but let's, let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for the good news of this Holy Week. For Jesus going into Jerusalem, for the crowds welcoming him, but then we remember with sadness, they turned against him later in the week. And so for a few days, there was great sadness. But then, on Sunday, following Good Friday, there was great news. And the news was that God had raised Jesus from the dead, a promise he makes to all of us. So together we say, amen. Together we say, amen. amen. Okay, go ahead back. And try not to beat each other up with the palm branches. Thank you. Palm Sunday, it is often uh, the passion reading that uh, shares with us the lengthy gospel for the day. And so this morning, uh, we begin with that reading. Where's Oni? There you go. 
And between each reading, there will be a verse of the hymn, Alas, and did my Savior bleed. Kathy, if you'll give us an introduction to that hymn, Alas, and Did My Savior Bleed, number 337.
and two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he has said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way.
Tony, I know why you were waiting because I was supposed to do something before you went up there. And that is to basically say good morning. Good morning. And welcome on a beautiful sunny day that I hear is going to turn into rain a little bit later. Uh, simply to announce, you know, the schedule for this coming week. On Thursday at 6.30, we have our Monday service. We will be focusing on the Lord's Supper, as that was the evening according to scripture when Jesus instituted Holy Communion. On Friday, we again gather at 6.30, and both of those times, by the way, are p.m. And on Friday, we will look at the seven statements that uh, Jesus made from the cross. Uh, then on Easter Sunday, we gather at 6.30 a.m. And uh, we celebrate our Lord's resurrection. We will be doing communion at that service. We will celebrate communion at the 8.30 service as well. And in between times, there will be a uh, fellowship breakfast with uh, finger foods, etc., as we gather to once again celebrate our Lord's resurrection. So uh, again, uh, welcome, uh, good to have you here. As we celebrate communion this morning, I want you to know that all present are invited to come. Uh, we believe, I believe, that the sacrament of Holy Communion belongs to our Lord, not to any church, not to any tradition, but to all of God's people. And so we invite you to share in the Lord's Supper as you would uh, this morning. So again, good to have you with us. And somebody has told me that one of the good things about Palm Sunday is that because of all the other stuff that goes on, the pastor's sermon is usually short. <laughs> <laughs> Dear friends in Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. What event do you look forward to in your life? What do you get together with family and friends to celebrate? I would suggest there is the birthday, there's the anniversary, there's the graduation, uh, there is the reunion of family, and many other events that you look forward to. But on this Palm Sunday, I would ask you, what don't you look forward to? Uh, for me, it's my bi-yearly trip to the dentist. Anybody else have that identification? Or, as it was probably for my friend Gary and myself about a year ago, the uh, fact that there was going to be surgery. Uh, Gary tells me he's glad he went because the pain is gone from his back. And after five years of my orthopedic surgeon telling me you should have your knee replaced, I finally did it. I didn't look forward to that. <laughs> you know, uh, anybody here look forward to surgery? I didn't think so. Uh, but it's something that has to happen and take place. And I can tell you that for Gary, for myself and probably for a number of you out there, you're ultimately happy that you finally had it done. And perhaps said, I wish I had done it sooner. I would suggest this morning that as we enter Holy Week, we might prefer to skip ahead from today to next Sunday. And you might say to the pastor or to somebody else, do we have to? Do we have to go through the events of Holy Week instead of just jumping ahead 
to the celebration of Easter. We'd like to skip ahead. And even though on Monday, Thursday, Jesus gives us that wonderful sacrament, we would rather skip ahead and not see Jesus betrayed, nor see Jesus arrested. And then as we go into Good Friday, we would rather skip his trial, first in front of the Jewish council, and then in front of the Roman governor, Pilate. We'd rather move beyond Pilate's condemning of Jesus. We'd rather forget about Jesus suffering on the cross. We'd rather forget about his death on the cross. We'd rather skip the questioning and the doubts of the disciples from the time of Jesus' death on the cross to the time when they go to the tomb on Easter Sunday. Because maybe that reminds us of the doubts and the questions I think all of us have at one time or another regarding our faith. So let's skip ahead, Pastor. Let's sing a victory song today. Jesus Christ is risen today. Let's move on from the parade, the fun we just had, to the good news of Easter next Sunday. Let's just move on. But the fact is, we can't do that. We cannot do that because if we were to move ahead without the events of Holy Week, we would remove God's work on our behalf. We would move from betrayal, arrest, trial, flogging, crown, and especially the cross if we were just to move ahead. And that we would find ourselves losing the fact that all of those events, though they might be painful at time, we are reminded that they were for you, for me, for all of us. That which we would skip in life we often find having a positive result for us. Surgery, rehabilitation, beneficial and worthwhile. And so as we go through Holy Week, we walk with Christ to his death and we travel with him out of the empty tomb. What we call the confusion of Jesus when he goes into Jerusalem hopefully begins to make sense to us. The confusion because he goes into Jerusalem on a donkey and not on a war horse. He goes into Jerusalem with simple garments and not regal robes. He goes in as a prophet, but he really doesn't speak to the crowd at that time. There is no royal proclamation. There is no key given to the city. The throng of people who greet him are not the rulers, not the powerful, but ordinary people like you and me. And when he goes in to Jerusalem, he doesn't go to the palace. But we are told he goes to the temple. And the events of that week all ending at the cross on Golgotha. As St. Paul would say, the week we call holy 
leads to the foolishness of the cross. And also the week that takes place, according to the Gospel of John, would point to the glory of the cross. A glory that becomes ours today in God's promises. The words of the crowd, crucify him, become God's word of love for each one of us. And Christ, hanging on the cross, would move from talking about love to an action of love that ultimately we would observe on Good Friday and then really celebrate next Sunday with the words, He is risen. He is risen. Indeed. Amen. I invite you to stand at this time as we have the prayers of intercession. I will end the petition. Merciful God, your response, receive our prayers. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Save your church, O oh God. Enable us to boldly confess in every time and place that Jesus is Lord. With the humility of a servant, equip congregations, synods, and other ministry settings to proclaim your extravagant love for all. Merciful God. Save our, your creation, O oh God. Every living being you have made has purpose. Give us renewed appreciation of farm animals for those who labor in the fields, for service animals who accompany their human companions, and for beloved pets who live alongside us. Merciful God. Save the peoples of the earth, O oh God. Restore dignity to those who are scorned and persecuted for their religious beliefs or political activism, and deliver them from the hand of their enemies. Bring peace to places where conflict runs deep. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Save those who cry to you in any need, O oh God. Watch over all who are incarcerated or awaiting trial, and stand with those who are unjustly accused. Be present with those feeling isolated, lonely, or fearful. Be with all who are looking for restored health and healing, whose names we share with you at this time. We pray for all victims of natural and human disasters. Merciful God, save us in your love, O oh God. Guide the work of church musicians, pastors, choirs, readers, deacons, technicians, acolytes, and all who assist in worship. Sustain them in their leadership as they accompany congregations through this Holy Week. Merciful God, save us at the last, O oh God. We give you thanks for your saints of old who embodied your servant love as you came to their aid. So deliver us in times of trial that every knee would bend in praise to you. Merciful God, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We're doing communion a little bit differently this morning.
you are going to participate along with the pastor in the consecration of the elements as we will together read the account of Jesus giving us communion as it is found in the Gospel of Matthew. So looking at your bulletin, please join with me in the reading of Matthew 26. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of wine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And together we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, invites us to come to his holy supper.
We will join together in a post-communion prayer. I want you to realize that after we have said Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, I will be adding a small petition for a blessing upon those who will be going to share communion with our shut-ins, a blessing for the shut-ins, a blessing for those who are bringing communion, as we uh, are thankful for those who have indicated a willingness to do that. So let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of the Holy Spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Bless those who share this sacrament and those who receive the body and blood of our Lord where they reside and live their lives. May your presence, may your body and blood bless them as it blesses us. Amen. And now receive the blessing of our God. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. And then you may be seated as we ask our Sunday school kids to come on up once again. enthusiasm and so on and so forth. That was good, right? Do you think you're going to get away without standing, jumping up and down, and singing Hosanna? Can you lead us? Up? Let's get, come on, as you're able, stand. And we're going to sing Hosanna. Can we sing with you guys? Can we do that again? Okay, jumping up and down, I like that idea. Here we go. <laughs> Let's have you go. Jumping up and down, jumping up and down, jumping up and down, Hosanna. Jumping up and down, jumping up and down, jumping up and down, shout Hosanna. Go in peace, shout Hosanna, serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God. Have a great week. <clears throat>